My name um, is Susie Moses. I, um, as Angie said, I'm the coordinator here. Um, I think that um, that social media um, is it, it's offering a really exciting time right now for artists. Um, it's opening up um, worlds that prior were not accessible to anybody. Um, and I'm going to show you how to access those worlds. Twitter, in and of itself, is this fantastic medium um, for promoting your work, for finding clients, for contacting galleries, for finding communities in New York, outside of New York. Um, so we're going to be, I know it can be overwhelming, um, and I know it's, it's, I kind of, I wore this dress actually today because it's the way I feel about data. It's like lots of it in lots of different colors and it's constantly coming at you. Um, so anyhow, I'm, I'm going to try and work through, we're going to do the basics and that's why we're calling it 101. Um, there are a lot of advanced ways in which to interact with Twitter and, and followers, but we're going to really kind of focus on the basics. I think you should also be aware that I'm going to be promoting best practices today. And best practices are more work than not the best practices. And what, whatever I say to you, it's not what you have to do, it's what it's the best way to interact and to gain followers and to create a community, which is what this is really all about. I know that it's going to sound like a lot, like way too much, too many to do's. Um, I think it's smarter to know what you're supposed to be doing before you actually start doing it. Um, so, and it depends, I'm sure we're at different levels. Um, I would love to have heard where you are all at and what you would want out of today's um, workshop. But again, with a microphone, I don't think that's going to be able to work. Um, could, by a show of hands, could I just see how many visual artists we have here? Okay, great. I would say at least two thirds. Okay, how about film? Any filmmakers? Okay. Um, how about um, other? Any, anybody we didn't cover? Well, and, and um, I'm a design consultant. Design, okay, design consultancy. Okay, fantastic. Um, I think that it's also, um, it's the easiest way to promote your work when you're an introvert. Um, and most of us are intro introverts. We don't like to shout out loud about what we're doing. Um, and this is a very quiet way, an effective way of, of getting online. And, and I think actually better than Facebook. It's my opinion that Twitter um, exceeds the other um, social media that um, that we, we won't be covering LinkedIn and Facebook and Behance today um, but I think Twitter kind of is is top-notch for what we're all trying to do um, so Twitter 101 for artists or also known as wickedly creative and intelligent people who feel like Luddites um, by a show of hands can I see who feels like a Luddite in this room okay um, does anybody not identify with being a Luddite at all you feel totally like you've embraced technology and that's all you want to do all day long is technology? Okay, yeah. That doesn't really sound like most of us. Um, we want to do our art and we want to promote it and we want to sell it and we want to make a living off of it, but um, we don't want to constantly be um, submerged in technology and we're going to work on time management as well today. Um, a lot of this information has come from a lot of different sources. I um, Sri Srivanasan is now the Dean of Technology up at Columbia. He was a, he's a journalist, he's a talking head on CNN, he has a blog. He's, he's kind of the guru for all of this and most of what I've learned and what I continue to learn from looking at his work um, is, is, is coming from him. He's fantastic. Um, he runs a lot of um, social media boot camps up at Columbia's Journalism School for Continuing Ed that anybody can be a part of. So if you just want more information after today, I would definitely recommend um, re recommend looking at his Twitter feed, look, signing up for his events. Um, he's kind of the model for, for how things are going. Journalists have been far more um, accepting of, of this new technology than almost any other field. Everybody seems to kind of be catching up right now. Journalists have really taken off. So if you're not sure about how things are, how, thi how you should do something, find a journalist that you like, find an arts writer, find, um, find like Nicholas Kristof, for example, who, who's not an arts writer, he's a reporter, um, and he's in the Mideast a lot. He's by far the best journalist on Twitter right now. Um, 
And then the rest of these, um, I don't need to go through them. What I'm doing right here and is what I'm going to be teaching you is to always give attribution. It's really, really important to not take information and pretend like you found it or it's yours and you've come up with this. Um, it's really important to show that you're learning from other people and that's what I'm doing with this slide here. I'm showing you where my sources are coming from. Um, I wanted to go through introductions, but we're just going to pass right over over the introductions today. Um, if, if you don't even understand what Twitter is, this is how Twitter defines themselves. Twitter is a real-time information network that connects you to the latest stories, ideas, opinions, and news about what you find interesting. Um, they call themselves a microblogging platform. Um, but really, it's, it's another form of social media. And social media can be a lot of different things. And the way we're defining it today, and I think it's important that we're all on the same page, is sharing content with people in your network. Um, like I said before, these are the top four places for artists to be hooked up. Um, if you don't have a Behance portfolio, get one. Um, we're going to talk about getting you signed up for a Twitter handle today if you don't have one. Facebook, um, you should be on there, and LinkedIn. Um, th this is where um, curators, gallerists, museums, recruiters, I could go on and on and on, but, but if you're in a creative field, this is where you should be. Um, and social media requires engagement. It's very easy to be passive. It's easy to go on your Facebook profile and scan what other people are doing. It requires the next step to engage with people, and that's what the best practice is. And I'm going to repeat it many times today until you walk out of here not wanting to ever be a passive user again. Um, you want to be listening, joining, leading, and enabling conversations. Um, that's really what social media is about, is about a constant conversation and jumping in it and jumping out of it. Um, you don't want to just have a conversation. You want to elevate that conversation to make it meaningful, to make people want to continue to that conversation with you. You want to respond to ideas and comment in an authentic way. In a lot of ways it's just like a college classroom. Um, nobody's interested in knowing what you had for breakfast or what color shoes you're wearing today, but they are interested in what you're thinking. Um, there are a lot of buzzwords that come up in social media. Um, for those of you who were here for the social media um, 101 workshop, which was a couple of months ago, you might see a couple of similar slides. I wanted to get everybody on the same page again with, um, so this is one of the slides we used uh, back um, in Social Media 101 where we covered more than just Twitter. Um, community is really, really important. Authenticity, nobody's interested in, in a persona. They're interested in who you are, and if they feel like they're not getting, what, getting who you really are, they're going to move on. Um, meaningful, which goes back to authenticity. Um, a conversation we've discussed, an exchange, not just taking, but a, a, a give and take of ideas and branding. And like I said a couple weeks ago, um, branding is kind of a dirty word in the creative community. Um, and branding doesn't have to be a dirty word. Um, it's, it's your presence online. It's how people find you, your searchability, um, how you profile yourself. And um, Twitter, Twitter is the way in which to kind of spearhead that idea of branding, who you are, what you do, what you're good at, what are your skills. Um, and then this also goes back to something I've discussed before, which is artistic citizenship. Um, I saw this in a classroom, in a class syllabus described as literary citizenship, and I've repurposed it for, for um, this. Social media is just part of, is just another way to be a citizen in this artistic community. By following people that you find helpful, by liking and commenting on other content that, um, in a meaningful way, sharing content you find helpful, writing notes of admiration, one of the easiest ways to, to interact in, in these communities is by sending somebody a note via a tweet and saying, I was at your show last night and I really liked this painting. It's, it doesn't require a lot of work. It's fast. It sends positive information at another human being and they probably don't get a lot of positive information and they're going to want to respond to you.
and then reaching out and inviting others into your network. Um, now, the, why should you spend time on Twitter? You're here, so I'm kind of talking to the, the, the choir here, but it connects you to, to whoever your audience is, whoever you want to be targeting. Um, it directs you to news. Um, your communication is changing. I would argue communi communication has changed, and you don't want to be left behind. Um, you can stay abreast of trends. You can read really interesting information. You can find the breaking news the minute something's happening. Um, it's on Twitter before it's on the front page of the New York Times. Everything now, news-wise, is on Twitter way before it, it hits the news cycle. Um, and you can see other people's portfolios. This is the passive way. This is where you're going to start. This is how you get going passively to figure out Twitter. Reading, understanding trends, understanding what's happening in real time. Um, this, is what, this is what the next step is, is actively engaging on Twitter. Um, you want to make new contacts by following people. You want to you learn to write tight and compact because you only have 140 characters, and we'll come back to that. We'll talk about that later. You're going to showcase your portfolio. You're not just going to look at other people's portfolios. You're going to look at they're going to look at yours. Practice artistic citizenship. You can use it quickly. It's a faster social media. Um, you're going to showcase your expertise. Everybody in this room has some kind of expertise. Um, you're going to share what you've learned. Learn from people you admire and respect. Um, you can find inspiration, a sense of belonging to a larger community that you may not be able to access physically. Um, you want to bring as many eyeballs to your portfolio as possible. Earn, earn new commissions, which um, we're learning. People are selling work. Um, one of the articles I, um, I printed out, and if you didn't grab one on the way in, you should grab it on the way out, is what's going on with artwork online. Um, Add a skill set to your resume. This is something that employers are looking for. So if you're looking for a job, they're interested in whether or not you can tweet and whether or not you can tweet well. Um, and then create, craft, and enhance your artistic brand. So this is, this is an add-on to your artistic brand. Um, there are a lot of words that are surrounding Twitter. And a lot of people use them incorrectly. And that's fine. It's not a big deal. But if you're going to do it well, you should know, know what you're saying. Um, so Twitter is the software or the platform. A tweet, can be, you, you can tweet something. It's a noun or a verb. Um, tweeps, I hate this word. I hate it a lot. It sounds like creeps. Um, <laughs> it's your followers. Um, retweeting is something that you um, either hit a button to, to send out to your network. You see something somebody else sent out and you retweet it, you're passing it along to your own network. A tweet up is something that, um, like if we were in this room and everybody was on their smartphones um, and it's something you'll learn to do, you're tweeting as the person is speaking. I forgot to mention that you're free to, feel free to take images today of any of the slides. You're welcome to take images of me. I don't know why you would want to, but if you do, you can. Um, you can tweet out anything. I ask you to use the hashtag SVASM, which was in the invitation that most of you got. If you don't know what any of that means, that's fine. You'll understand by the end of the day. But if you are tweeting today, use the hashtag SVASM. Tweet ups use hashtags, and we'll, t we'll get on to what a hashtag is. Um, and then the fail whale, which I couldn't get a, a, a image of is this Twitter is growing faster than it can handle and they can't hire enough people to, um, to as software engineers and developers um, to handle they have over a billion people as of last year I don't know what the current number is so sometimes they're trying to get on Twitter and it's this big whale that's gotten caught in a net and they call it the fail whale and it just means that it'll be up and working in a couple of minutes um, so here's the link. So if that's the language, this is the lingo. Um, if you see something uh, on Twitter with an RT, means that it's been retweeted. An MT is a modified tweet. You've, you're retweeting something from somebody else. You've cha had to change a couple of things in it to suit suit your needs. So you do an MT. Reposting is you're you're retweeting yourself. 
Um, HT is a hat tip. Um, OH is overheard that you see in a lot of jur with journalists. Um, LMK is let me know if you're targeting, if you're asking something of somebody and you don't, you know, I'm not sure of something LMK. FTW is for the win. This little emoticon is love and DM is direct message. If you don't know what something is when you're on Twitter, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to either Google it or ask somebody who does know. I didn't know what a DM was, and um, I was a writer, or I am a writer rather, and um, an editor in um, the UK tweeted at me and said, DM me your email address, and I didn't know why he wanted. He was like a big deal editor. I had no idea what a DM was, and it took me about two days to get back to him, which was not ideal because I, I did not know that it was a direct message. So don't be afraid to ask. Um, um, hashtags are act like a tag on Flickr or Google. This has become a lot more common on Google since everybody's upgraded or on Gmail. Um, and you use hashtags in different ways. Um, you can use it, you should always see if there's an existing hashtag. In some cases, like if you're at an event, for example, today and it was Twitter 101. You might think the hashtag is tw hashtag Twitter 101, but I've given you the hashtag SVASM. So sometimes people get on different hashtags and it's a way to search for the conversation that you want to be a part of. So you should always see what's out there and it's super easy. You just go into the search box. We're going to get off of this um, presentation shortly and we'll go live on Twitter so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but find out if there is one, and if there isn't one, then create one. That's what I did with SVASM. Nobody had created a, a tweet up hashtag for SVA um, that, I could, that I could find. Um, hashtags are also good for breaking news when there's a tornado and people are trying to talk about what's happening in the middle of a hurricane or a storm. They're using the name of the storm, what have you. And then there's also the humorous ones, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen, and um, we'll I was tr actually trying to you, to find a humorous one for you, and I couldn't. And I, the the current knowledge is that you really shouldn't be using hashtags humorously, um, and I think that's why I had such a hard time finding one. But anyway, um, well, we'll go live shortly. Um, and here you can see there was um, Design Sponge is a, a design blog that um, I follow. They the the editor for the Design Sponge was the um, the keynote speaker for a conference that was happening yesterday. I was trying to find as, as up to date and current examples as possible for you guys. So the hashtag for the event was Alt NYC. It was the Alt Conference, and so all of these people were um, tweeting using this hashtag, and and all you do is click on it. It's a hyperlink, so you can find out exactly who and who you want to respond to or who else is at the event. Um, I was at a recent conference and realized that somebody who I had always followed her blog was at the event and I tweeted at her to say, you know, I'd really love to meet you. And she was like, let's meet at the water fountain. So it was an immediate way in real time to meet people that you otherwise will never ever meet um, who may not respond to your, your emails. Um, this is the, like, this is the great part about, about Twitter. Um, and then this is the example of what happens when there are multiple um, hashtags for a single event. So different people were, were using Alt Summit versus Alt NYC. You want to avoid it. It's, um, so if you're hosting an event, what you can start doing, like if you're having a gallery opening, you could set up a hashtag for the gallery opening and invite all of your friends to tweet out um, where they're at using the hashtag and sending out an image. It's a great way to like, you're immediately hitting every, like if you have five friends that do that and they all have 50 followers, you now have five different networks who are receiving these tweets and who now know about you. Otherwise, they may not have known about you. Now, this is Sri. Um, this is a great way in which he's using hashtags. Um, it's easy to tag hashtags on to the end of a tweet, but he's using it as part of of the text in his tweets here. Um, and he's using multiple hashtags. He's always including a link. Um, he's including, he's properly typing out the, the handle that, um, 
that he's responding to. Um, so again, we'll, res we'll return to what makes a really good tweet. Um, getting started, um, how many people have a Twitter handle? Okay, and who doesn't? Okay, great. Um, when you're opening your account, you've got to pick your, your handle. And I suggest that you think of it like a tattoo because Twitter's not going anywhere and you don't want to get stuck with something that um, you won't like in two years. It's kind of like a phone number. I have a phone number from Vermont. I've lived in eight places since I've lived in Vermont, but I held on to my phone number because I didn't want to have to redirect people to a new phone number. Um, this ideally is also your handle for other social media. Um, in most cases, like in LinkedIn and Facebook, you can adjust your URL so it says facebook.com slash. In my case, I always use my full name because my name is somewhat singular and so I, and I happen to be able to get it. I'm on top of it so I get the, these handles before the other Suzanne Moses that I know of gets them. Um, and I think she probably doesn't like me. <laughs> um, so think of it, it's, it's sticking to you. And even if Twitter, let's say Twitter dies tomorrow, goes bankrupt and goes under, you want to be a, people to find you. This is all about searchability. So use the similar, similar handle. If you have a handle right now that you don't like, um, we can talk about strategies about how to change your handle. People do this all the time. It just means that you lose followers in the process. It's not the end of the world, but ultimately if you're trying to expand your network, you don't want to do something that would potentially cripple, cripple it. Um, you need to include a succinct, honest, and clear bio, um, and that's next. Um, you always want to include your website, portfolio, or Behance link. Um, this is the premier way to get clicks on, on your website and for designers to find you if, if they need help or freelance work or um, any kind of, um, anything somebody might be looking for you for, you want to show them examples of your work. Um, most of us have smartphones at this point um, and the easiest way to tweet is from your phone. It's not as easy when you're in front of your computer and trying to deal with email and um, phone calls and what have you. It doesn't mean that you can. I actually happen to do it more from the computer than from my phone, but the overarching wisdom is that it's easiest to do from your phone. You can take a photo, immediately tweet it out, and, and you're done. Um, and then you follow people and then you start tweeting. So that's like, that's the gist of just getting going. This is. It's nothing, you know, it's not a club you have to be invited to. It's not, it's super easy and it's free. So this is Hillary Clinton just joined Twitter a couple days ago. I think it was like maybe 10 days ago. And she already has 530,000 followers. <laughs> um, I followed her and as soon as I followed her, I got um, followed by a, an account called Ready for Hillary. <laughs> um, her um, bio is a gorgeous example of what a bio should be. She obviously hired somebody to do this. She did not do this herself. Um, but she has, um, in, you know, she has succinctly said exactly who she is, what she's doing. She's brought humor. She's shown a side of herself that you wouldn't normally see. Um, she is not afraid to be honest with what's going on. The pantsuit aficionado, I think, is what makes it, honestly. That's, that's I think, where, where she gets the gold star. Um, but this, this required, like, this in and of itself requires a lot of work to figure out who you are, what you're doing, where you're going, why should somebody know who you are, um, and what are you really good at. And here, here she does all those things. Um, she includes her, her foundation. She's obviously getting ready to probably um, get on a ticket. So um, this is, again, what, we, what I was just talking, um, talking about. You don't want to write aspiring anything. If you're going, it's the same for LinkedIn. It's the same for Facebook. You, you, if you're going to be something, you're, you're already it. You've got you've to project that, that you are, in this case, a pantsuit aficionado. You can't be just going out to buy your you know, first pantsuit. <laughs> it's a bad example. <laughs> but anyway, um, 
don't use exclamation points. Um, they're really hard on the eyes and nobody takes you seriously. Um, never assume someone knows what you do. Now, I have a bunch of examples of um, good bios. This is the woman who um, is the editor-in-chief of Behance and um, their sister site is 99U. What's great about it is that it's on a clear black background. A lot of people use images and that's fine, but this is great for, she's a designer and she knows that white against black is really, you know, you're gonna be able to read exactly what you need to read. Um, and she's, an, she's the editor of a book that just came out and um, has included her, included her website. Um, this is another editor who um, clearly tells you what he's doing, but he also once starred in a Snoop Dogg video, a swagger, of course, which is funny, but it doesn't distract from what else he does and what, what he's good at, and it shows a, a, a certain side of himself. Um, this I don't like because of the image. The image is of poor quality. This is a friend of mine. Um, but she is, she, what I like is the honesty. Infrequent guest on, so she's not saying she's a regular guest. She's being honest about it, but she wants to promote that she can be a television personality. So these are the places she's been on. And then also, this, this thing becomes really important. My Twitter opinions are my own. So she, she's a full-time editor at Travel and Leisure, but it, it's clarifying that she's not representing the brand on Twitter. This is her personal feed, and anything that she says cannot be held accountable for Travel and Leisure. And that's a great way to set, set yourself apart from your company, or you, you're allowed to say you work at Behance, but you don't want your words to be reflected, um, a, a reflection of Behance necessarily. So. We'll get more into what's appropriate on Twitter in a bit, but this is a great way to great way to handle it. And then she's also saying her next trip. This she actually um, this is also an option to set like an out of office message. If you start using Twitter constantly, people will expect you to respond constantly. And if you're not wonder if you're wondering why somebody's not responding to you, the, people are using Twitter as the way to communicate that they're not around, they're not checking email. I'll be back on. July 4th, um, and it's a great, succinct way that um, handles that. She's currently in South Africa. Um, this is another another um, one that I thought was, it was, it's Defender of the M-Dash. It's a little cute, but it works, um, and we know, we know what she does. She doesn't want to associate herself with what publishing house she works at. Now, these are bad bios. Um, and I'm spending so much time on this because this is the immediate way that somebody gleans whether or not they're going to follow you, whether they're going to read your tweets, whether or not they're going to respond to a tweet that you sent to them. It's super important to, to get the bio down. Um, I didn't want to put their pictures up and their names with them, so these are all individual. Writer, reader, wolf girl, and literary editor. First of all, it's all in lowercase. Um, it doesn't give you a lot of um, confidence that she's a great literary editor. Um, you have no idea what Wolf Girl is, and it doesn't set her apart from any of the other writers and readers of the world, which we all are. Friend of Zach, Zach Galifianakis. Um, this is a famous actor, um, and that's his bio, which is funny, and, it's, and he's a funny actor, um, but it doesn't really help us understand. It makes us assume what he is or what he does, and that's not what this is about. This is about being clear about um, who you are. The man who works, the man who thinks, the man who does nothing. It's not somebody that I would ever want to work for me, ever. Neither this one, napper, writer, obscure reference maker. I find that kind of irritating. Um, Cory Booker is the mayor of Newark, Newark, New Jersey. Now, it's great that he has a Twitter feed, but he's not doing what Hillary Clinton was doing. We already know he's the mayor of, of Newark. We want to know more. This is, a, this is supposed to be a, the more personal, authentic side of, of the people and this is not really helpful. I am Alan Yentob, creative director of the BBC. Well, we know he's Alan Yentob because his Twitter handle is Alan Yentob, but again, it's not taking it to the next step. And then this is Joyce um, Carol Oates, author, <laughs> which is, again, this kind of, it makes you think that perhaps she's a little arrogant or pretentious. I'm not saying she is. I'm just saying it makes you think that if that's all you're going to put as your profile, 
you know, I know a lot of authors. <laughs> um, so anyway, so Twitter basics. Um, a there's the 140 character limit, which I'm sure you're all aware of. Um, reigning wisdom that I completely agree with is do not use all 140 characters. You want to be retweeted, and I'll show you the best way to retweet, but you need to leave spaces for somebody else to add commentary. If you're starting a conversation, you need somebody to respond, and if they're going to respond, they need to reference what they're responding to. So they need to respond to your tweet with part of your tweet still in there. Um, you always want to attribute the person um, or give at, excuse me, give attribution to the person you're retweeting or responding to. Um, for anything private with private communication, like sending email addresses or what have you, don't hesitate to use DMs. However, you should be aware that Twitter isn't set up in such a way that it's easy to access those DMs, so they get buried. So if you're sending a DM and you need to have it responded to immediately, you may want to tweet at that person also and say, I've just DM'd you. Please, please get back to me. Um, you always link. To not link is to make the biggest Twitter um, faux pas ever. You always, always link um, when referring to an article or a portfolio or an image. Um, and then lastly, a hashtag, um, which we, which we um, ex dis discussed earlier. Sri has this idea of what makes a, a really good tweet. You want to have as many of these attributes as possible in your tweet. Um, if you can, it's almost impossible to get all of them, but you should make sure that you have at least four to six. It's not that hard, but again, it quickly eliminates the stuff if you're like, does anybody care about what I'm eating for breakfast? If you refer to this list, probably not. Um, <laughs> so. Um, it's a great list as you're getting going and eventually it kind of just becomes stuck in your head, but it is. It's a really fantastic list to refer to when you're not sure how, how you're doing. And writing briefly and concisely is really tough. It's like writing a headline. You've got to get as much across as possible in a short period of time and keep people reading. Um, when you start reading people's Twitter, um, Twitter feeds, you can figure out really quickly who's good at this and who's not. And a lot of people are not good at it, and they're not trying to get better. And um, you know if you're hooked, they're doing something right. And just take a look at what they're doing and, and why it's kept you reading their, um, their tweets. I will be, when we go live onto Twitter, I'm going to be focusing on my Twitter feed just because it's more developed and I, I spend more time with it. I'm showing you the SVA career development um, feed right now um, because the, we as career development serve a, a really large population and so when we want something to be sent out to a specific population in, in our network, we will capitalize um, generally the first the first word. And the reason for doing that is because when you're scanning a long Twitter feed and you're going all the way down, capitals will catch somebody's eye um, before something lowercase or, you know, or a hashtag does. Um, I would not do all capitals because it's like somebody's shouting at you. But um, in this case, we're reaching animators. In this, in this case, we're reaching women. Um, and then you always, for events, you always want to include the time, the date, the, the link, and the hashtag. There are like five things that you always want to include in, especially in promotion. Um, I do less of this in, on my own Twitter feed, but if you're doing this for a company or a business or for a school, for example, this is a great way to really target who you're sending, who you're sending this tweet to so that I don't, you know, if I was a student at SVA and I had to click on all of these things, I wasn't sure who, you know, if this was for animators or if it was for the whole SVA community. You, you want people to know that you're doing it well so that they can do it well. Um, and again, this um, checklist that we've all been talking about, I think the most important thing to stress, though, is adding your own opinion or commentary. 
for a long time well, when I first started using Twitter I was tweeting out everything I was reading because I just didn't have time to really engage in the community and I think it's a great passive way to be on Twitter is to tweet what you're reading or tweet what you're looking at um, I wasn't adding my own thoughts on on what I was reading and I've found that since I've started adding my ideas in a couple of words in advance of the link to what I'm reading um, the response level is and the clicks are just so much higher um, this is what a good tweet looks like if you're not sure um, they're telling you, they're giving you, um, I was following the SCOTUS um, hashtag trend this morning, and I'll show you how you can follow that. Um, they're giving you something to read, they're giving you, um, they're giving you hashtags, they're telling you exactly what, what you'll be reading. LA Times does a really good, good job with Twitter. Um, this is what it, I'm not going to say this guy's name, but this is what a poor Twitter feed looks like. This is all self-promotion. He's not responding to anybody. Everything is um, his name, which we already know because it's up here, and then the at sign, um, which is also his name, so we don't need to know who, who wrote these articles. But nevertheless, it's tweeted out again, and um, the name of the article, and then the link. What he's likely doing is he, once his article is published, he's hitting the tweet button on um, the site and not, not characterizing the tweet himself and um, just to get it out there, just for self-promotion. Um, he's not engaging. He's not sharing new ideas. He's not giving you insight as to why you should read his article. He's not using hashtags. He is wasting characters by including his name here. Um, like this is just, and if you look at it, you don't really want to read any of it. It doesn't feel like you're getting a more personalized version. You could have read this on your own without him having recommended it to you. Um, I love his writing, which is why I was kind of appalled when I saw um, his Twitter feed. So don't just don't just self promote. Yes, this is the this is a perfect platform for self promotion, and you should be, but you should be hyping yourself and hyping others, and you should be engaging. I can't say it enough. If you're not sure about what you should tweet about, um, these are a couple of ideas. Um, I think going to an event and live tweeting the event is one of the best ways to figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Because you've got to keep your fingers going, you've got to keep your eye on the speaker while picking out um, worthy quotes. Um, it's this like kind of intense <laughs> reporting practice that makes you quickly kind of figure out how to use your words best in the most succinct way. Um, now the question becomes, who do you follow? And there are multiple different strategies. The first question you should ask yourself is, who has art like yours, and are they on Twitter? If they are, you should follow them. You should see what they're doing. Um, and then who do you like? Artists are kind of behind on this, um, which is why I applaud you for being here. Um, the fact that this is free and easy and um, totally accessible means that there's really no excuse as to why you shouldn't be doing it. But even get some galleries aren't on Twitter. All the museums are. So, for example, you should be following the gallery who reps you or the gallery that you want to rep you. And then you should follow all of the artists, if they're on Twitter, who, um, who the, that gallery rep represents. I went on, I was going to try and use the exam, find an example today and then in the last couple of minutes and I couldn't find, before the presentation started, and I couldn't find a really good gallery that was doing this well um, or the artists of a specific gallery that were doing this well without the gallery um, promoting it. It's something I, I don't, um, I, I, yeah, I'm not going to repeat myself. <laughs> um, I think it's fantastic. So. Anyway, um, the article that I also printed out for you about selling artwork online, I think it's a great example of you read something really interesting. This, you know, this guy is starting to buy artwork <coughs> online without having ever seen it, and he's, he's on Twitter a lot. So I was like, I wonder, you know, I found him on Twitter, and then I found who he was talking about on Twitter, and then he, 
he had lists of people to follow. So it becomes this thing that the minute you see, some, see somebody who is doing what you want to be doing well, follow them. Just find them and just follow them and figure out how, how they're doing what they're doing. Um, you should be reading articles. This is true of any industry. You read, you read what people in your industry are doing well and try and, and mimic them, try and understand why they're finding success. Um, follow the authors too. A lot of authors, like I think arts writers are some of the best people to be following because they're constantly talking about art and they're commenting on how people are using social media um, and not necessarily the artists themselves. You can use Google Alerts. Ever since I kind of started following social media in the arts, I've created several different Google Alerts that so I don't have to constantly search for these for these words every day, you know, to see if there are new articles. They just come into my inbox and um, and it's just taken care of. If you don't have a Google Alert on your name, you should, so that you know if anybody's talking about you. Um, and you can use hashtags, like you can use the hashtag artist to just see what's popping up on Twitter. Um, now strategies for following. Um, we've, we've discussed a bunch of these. Art area organizations are great. Um, journalists in your field, since they're doing, doing this well. Um, experts in your field. And then current and potential customers. Also your competitors. Um, that way you know what they're doing so that you can do it better. Um, and then it becomes, this is an ongoing huge question, what's more important? Who you follow or who follows you? And I believe, and not everybody believes this, but I believe that who you follow is far more important than who follows you. You're trying to create a value-driven network. I know some people who say yes to every single um, LinkedIn person who requests the connection. But ultimately, you get this kind of watered down group of people who you don't have a lot of personal connection to. You might know 50% of them personally, but you don't want a watered down network. You want to know that the network that you're going to is as powerful as possible. Otherwise, why spend the time doing this? Because it does require time, and it's overwhelming. Sometimes it feels like it's eating up so much of your time. So if you're going to do it, you want the value in it. And, and so who you follow, you've curated. This is your curated list, as opposed to the people who are following you. They, anybody can follow you, but it doesn't mean that you need to follow them. Some people automatically will follow you back if you follow them. They follow a ton of people and they have a ton of people following them, but that doesn't mean that their network is useful or helpful. It just means that they have a lot of Twitter followers um, and they tend to be really weird and irritating. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm going to break off for a bit and just go on to Twitter. Um, so this is my, um, my home page. I follow 1,165 people, and I have 461 following me. Um, I'm proud of those 461. I've been on Twitter, I think, since 2009. This isn't a lot of people. I should be, I should be clear. This is not a lot of people. But every person following me, I, I feel like I've earned by, by giving them something that they couldn't get up elsewhere. For a while it was me giving them like the best reads. On, I had a really great curated list of reading that and the best compliment I ever got was that any that a friend said that anything that I tweeted out she knew that she had to read because it was so good and I was like that's awesome. Um, so you have to figure out what you're good at and how, how you're going to make this work for you. Um, I'm, we're going to just do a little, has everybody, show, by show of hands, who has not been on Twitter or has not seen this at all? Okay. So I'll go, I'll do kind of the express version. This is, um, this is your homepage when, whenever you click onto somebody else. For example, I'm going to go to an arts writer um, from the Observer. This is what it looks like when you're just looking at somebody. She's really good. I would, if I were you guys, I would follow her. Um, so her basic bio is very short. 
um, her link is to all the things that she's written at The Observer. You immediately know how many tweets she has, how many she's following, and how many followers she has. Um, now, you can see her tweet, by clicking on, on this, you can see her tweets, then who she's following, including Hugh Hefner. Um, you can see what she's favorited. This is great when you're researching a specific person. If you have an interview with the director of design at Google, for example, you want to see who, um, who they followed and then what they favorited. You oftentimes get a really great insight into somebody's network and who their personal friends are in the industry just by seeing who they favorited. Um, you rarely favorite something that if you don't know the person. Um, it turns out that she is really good friends with, with Lincoln Michelle. Um, she's really, really, obviously, if she's in the art world, she's um, totally um, into various museums, but she's not great, as far as I know, she's not great friends with Jane Fonda. But anyway, it's a great way to, I, I think we'll go more on to looking for jobs and, and researching clients later on, but the followers and the favorites are great. Um, and then there are lists, which I don't think, oh, she does have lists, okay. The lists are the way to curate your feeds. You um, set up a list or you can follow somebody else's list. And this is the way to, this is like the best way to cut down noise. You might want, you might be following, like for me, I'm following 1,500 different people, more than that. But I have various lists to, to cut down on. You know, who are the arts writers? Who are the book critics? who are the book editors, um, and, and so when I go on to Twitter, and I'm going to recommend that you do this, you go on with an intention. Is it to reach out to a specific person that day? Is it to um, figure, out, figure out who um, you want to target with a community of people with a tweet? You can target all of, I could target all of the arts writers in New York with a single tweet if I, if I wanted to. Um, re or you can see what all the arts writers in New York today are um, writing about. Like, obviously, DOMA is a huge issue right now, and everybody is kind of talking about DOMA. So you can get in on that conversation. You can see, you can follow immediately where the conversation is and who's responding to who, and then you can respond to those people. You're allowed to respond to people that you have no access to otherwise. And if you do a good job at it, they're going to respond to you too. They're going to be interested in your ideas. Um, the access to me is just mind blowing. Like I just I can't believe that um, that I can tweet at Hillary Clinton. I don't think she'll respond to me, but um, but that kind of level of access is really 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 cool. Um, okay, so then up above. So if you hit home, you go back to your home page. Then you're at connect. This is when people tweet at you. Thank you, Vin. <laughs> um, this is when people uh, tweet at you. I've set it up so that I get an email whenever somebody tweets at me. You don't have, if you're online constantly, you don't have to do that. Um, but you can immediately see the interactions that um, who's followed you, um, who's retweeted you, who's favorited you. Here, I'll go down a little bit. Um, this is kind of your activity feed that is not accessible um, to every, it's, people can see who's favorited whom, but um, this is a little bit more personal. You can see, um, you can see if you're doing a good job or not. Um, and then mentions are just when um, somebody's mentioned you in, in their tweet. Now, this is a great example, another great example of reaching out to um, somebody who I, don't, I only know through online. And I happen to go to a reading where this gentleman, his name is Lincoln, was re doing a reading one night. And I, had, and I went expressly to go meet him. I wanted to introduce myself. He, he's an editor at a um, journal that I would really like to publish in. So I wanted to introduce myself, but 
it got late and I had to run and it was pouring rain outside and I was stopping wet and I didn't want to go up to him looking like a drowned rat. So instead, I tweeted at him the following day and said, you know, I really enjoyed your, the reading last night. I wanted to introduce myself but had to duck out when it ended. And then he responded and said, thanks so much. Definitely introduce yourself the next time. So there's this kind of online relationship that's developing. I still haven't met him. I don't know when I'm going to meet him, but he knows my name now. And this is part of, I think, developing your network, getting your name out there in such a way that people recognize it. And they might not know you exactly that Suzanne Moses is the writer who tweeted me, but the name kind of gets stuck in, your, in their heads. And that's what what you hope to do when you're networking by handing out your cards. And this is just another way of bridging the gap. Um, OK, so and then discover, I think, will be best for those of you who are just starting out. Once you follow a bunch of people, and um, if you have questions about who you should follow, we can talk about that. Um, this, this discover tab tells you what Twitter thinks you're going to be interested in. And they're really good at it, like really, really good at it. Um, so all of these tweets, Twitter thinks that I might be interested in. Here, this, I keep thinking that I can scroll. So this is what they think I'm going to be interested in. Then there is activity going on amongst the people who I follow. Here, come on. So I can see that the Atlantic favorited this person. I, I don't know who that person is. Elliot Holt is a writer who I recently discovered who I'm really obsessed with. Um, and she favorited a tweet. So I suddenly, you suddenly see you know, this w that Elliot Holt probably knows this woman. Is that woman an editor? Is that woman um, a writer? You, know, you suddenly see how networks overlap. And there's a really, really cool app that's called Triangulate. Um, it's on one of the handouts that I gave you. We're going to talk about a couple of apps, but Triangulate is great in trying to source networks to figure out where the overlap is. You can find the mutual followers of, of up to three different people. You can find mutual friends between three people. So let's see. Um, so we were just doing. So here. Elliot Holt, let's say that I want to ask Elliot Holt to do an interview. And I want to see who our mutual friends are. Will it work? So anyway, what's going to come up when it's ready to come up are these two overlapping networks. And you'll suddenly see who you have in common. Um, so I have a bunch of people in common with Elliot Holt. And then you scroll down. And these are all the people who um, are in both of our networks. And then, it, for example, Days of Yore, a, a good friend of mine, runs this blog. She's really, really well connected. I would ask her, I would reach out to her and say, would you mind introducing me to Elliot Holt? And that took less than a minute to figure out who I needed to contact to reach out to a specific person. You can do this with anybody who's on Twitter. Um, it's probably one of the most powerful tools when, when you're trying to track down who the hiring manager is or who owns a gallery or what have you, especially if you're not in, in the inner circle. Um, OK, so then Twitter also suggests who to follow. And this is something they're also really good at. They see who you are like, who you're following, and who other people are following who they think you will be interested in. And th it's also the same here. They're constantly suggesting people for, for me to, to follow. And I find like 50% of the time they're, they're really good about it. Um, popular accounts is something fairly new, I believe. Um, but this is interesting. This is a place for you to begin because you can go down to, it's broken down by sections, and they have an art and design section. So they're suggesting 72 immediate places that you can follow for arts and design. You follow these, you start seeing, and then Twitter knows what you're into, and then you follow your friends, 
you follow your, you see who your friends are following, you follow them, you find somebody you really like on Twitter, follow who they're following. See what comes out of it. It can open up kind of a whole different realm for you. Um, and then the question becomes, how do you build followers? The more you tweet, the more followers you're, you will get. It hands down, it's a direct correlation. Um, I don't have time to tweet all day long. The, you know, hypothetically, you should probably be tweeting 10 to 15 times a day. I'm lucky if I tweet one to two times a day. It's just not, um, I'm working like two and a half full-time jobs right now. It's just not an option. Um, but what is good about this is that you're, you want to build the community and the network before you need it. So I've been building this over slowly over the course of three years. When my book comes out next year, I will have the network already in place for me to start tweeting at, um, about the book. I don't, need the bo I don't need the promotional materials right now. You just want to get it in place so that you're not scrambling desperately when the time comes that you need to publicize. Um, give more than you ask for is, is also a great way. Um, people will be interested in what you have to give in your expertise. They'll be interested if you're your, yourself. Um, Rebecca Skloot um, is this New York Times bestselling author who, I, the name of the title has escaped me, but she got to the top of the New York Times bestselling um, list, she claims, by, through social media by being herself, that the people she engaged with online were the people buying her books, and that she, she didn't want to be herself. It's hard to put yourself out there in such like a very real way, but th she realized very quickly that that was the way in which she was building. Built, the minute she put out something kind of personal, people flocked to her. Flocked to her. So, um, and I've heard this time and time again. She's one of like hundreds of examples I've heard, heard say this. Um, Use less than 140 characters we've talked about. Um, use capitalization sparingly and don't overuse hashtags. And then also something important to note is whining is, is really disliked. Um, nobody likes, like, you know, we hear people whine all day long when we're in line at Starbucks. We don't need to hear it when we're online. And people probably won't respond to you. Um, whining seems to be more geared for Facebook. And I can't tell you why. <laughs> I cannot explain it. But nobody likes it on Twitter, and, and people will attack you for it. Like, people will take, take you to task for it um, because nobody, it's, it's this, like, very oddly positive place where everybody's upbeat and promoting one another and working synergetically. It's like little robots. I, I don't know why, but <laughs> you, you want to remain upbeat. Um, we talked about lists. Um, we talked about a value-driven network. Um, Cutting through the noise, you can look at favorited tweets to see what, what people really like, and, and that's a great way. If you can't find a conversation you want to be a part of and you don't want to start a new conversation, you can find one in the favorited tweets section on, your, on Twitter. Um, follow suggestions from Twitter. And then I'll repeat this again because I think it's really important. It's like anything. You don't want your time wasted. We have so little of it, and it's so easy. They want us to waste our time on these platforms. Like, they're begging us to waste so much of our time. And you go, want to go on Facebook for five minutes, and then you see pictures of babies and then pu pictures of puppies, and you just get wrapped up in it because we're visual, and that's what we like to see. If, you, if you're not sure about what to post, post pictures. But... Um, Set an intention. It's like setting an intention when you sit down to a meal to not overeat. Or um, set a time limit, 15 minutes. You have, to, you have to accomplish one thing in 15 minutes. You set a goal, you do it, and you're done for the day. That's OK. Nobody expects you to be on this all day long. They do want responses, though. So if, if you do get tweeted at and it comes into your email box, I would encourage you to respond faster rather than slower. Um, Okay, these are the Twitter apps and add-ons. Some of these are on the handout that I gave you. That handout's from Social Media 101. Um, this is a little bit more advanced, which is why I'm not going to... Triangulate is, is advanced. Um, tweet Beep and Tweet Scan are like Google Alerts for Twitter. Um, TwitPic and Instagram are for sharing photos. 
Vine it has become this huge thing recently where you're sh sharing a short looping video and they're pretty cool. This is a, you've gotta remember Twitter is a text-based app or a, a text-based um, social media platform, but it doesn't mean that you can't post video or pictures or sound. All of this is possible on Twitter, but it is text-based. Um, TweetDeck and Hootsuite are, are great if you have multiple Twitter feeds, if you want to schedule your tweets and to create filters. I'm not a big fan of TweetDeck and Hootsuite. You can send something out, you, know, you can send the same text out through multiple channels, through Facebook, Twitter. Um, I think you can send it, you know, through a, like 18 different things. I, I've, I don't think that's a good idea. I think that if you're engaging, you need to be creating individual, in, special content for each of these sites. Each of these sites are different and they're supposed to be used differently. The way you engage people on Facebook is totally different, hypothetically, than the way that you engage people on Twitter. Um, after, after. Um, so, uh, if, if you're so overwhelmed and you know that you have to be tweeting because you have a huge gallery opening coming up, use Hootsuite, but just be aware that it's going to be obvious to everybody that you're not the one behind um, the computer sending out that tweet and people are less likely to interact with you. Um, and that's what this is supposed to be, is interaction. Um, tweet poll is if you want to ask a question, which is a great way to get people to like hit a button to, just by asking a question and you can poll your network. Quitter is great because it, you can track who's unfollowing you. There isn't an easy way on Twitter to do this. So you get an email with all of, the, all of the people who have unfollowed you in the past week. And I have an image coming up of that. I'll, I'll break that down a little bit more. Um, Twitalizer is the analytics for Twitter. And Twiangulate, I, I, I gave you guys um, a sense of. So Twitter is just, is I wanted, this just recently happened. So I'm moving to Atlanta um, in August and I'm going to have to start a new career. So I'm trying to figure out art schools in Atlanta that I could work at um, because I want to remain working at art schools. I'm really happy with the artist population. So I followed all of the people I could figure out who worked at SCAD, an art school in Savannah, but they have an Atlanta campus. So I, um, I found that this guy had followed me. He works, he's the, um, he works at, is it this guy or is it, it's, it's this guy. He's working at SCAD. Maybe he just left, I'm not sure. But I figured out that he had followed me because I had followed a bunch of other people. He, SCAD was in his, is in his bio, but he just followed me because I was following a bunch of people at SCAD. Um, and then when I didn't follow him back, he unfollowed me. And then I got this notice saying that these people had unfollowed me. I didn't care about this woman and I didn't care about this guy. These guys obviously weren't being very targeted in what they were doing. This guy had a reason to be following me and I had a reason to be following him and by me not following him, it meant that I wasn't paying attention to my social media, which means that I wasn't very good at what I was doing, which means that he wasn't really interested in me as a potential candidate for whatever. I'm not saying that he even thought of me as a candidate. I'm just saying that this highlighted for me that I had screwed up. So I immediately followed him and then he followed me back. And I haven't engaged with him, <laughs> but it's, it's that kind of level of knowing what you're doing. You want to show people you know what you're doing. Recruiters, are, recruiters constantly say that it's really obvious when people are using social media really poorly. Um, so um, for time management, we've talked about this. Um, I think the biggest thing that we haven't talked about is changing your media diet. You're looking for good information. You're not looking for People Magazine information, which is what we probably want to go to because it's entertaining and it's passive. And um, but we're not interested in Page Six and People Magazine and you know crap. We're interested in the stuff that's going to feed us, feed our careers, make us grow. So it really does mean following what is good for you. It's like <laughs> eating, you know, meat and vegetables instead of carbs and sugar. 
Um, and then also, it's helpful to know what time of the day your people, your tribe, whoever is in your crowd, when they're engaging online. For journalists, it's really early in the morning, but for, for artists, I find it's later in the afternoon. You need to figure out when people are around so that you're around when they're around. You know, everybody goes to the quote unquote water cooler to take a break, and this is, uh, this is the way to kind of take, take a break with them. Um, I can tell we're all getting a little tired. <laughs> I had 48 slides and I knew that was too much. Um, how many people are looking for a job before I, okay, it's enough for me to go over this. You should be, so if you're looking for a job, you follow the industry you are interested in um, and participate in the communities you care about. This is all, all common sense, however, it's, I know you've got to be told. This is, I know personally it's helpful for me to, to be told the same things over and over again before somebody, before I actually do them. Don't just retweet what others are saying, create meaningful conduct, content. Don't be afraid to be a thought leader. Um, use Twitter as a jumping off point. Consider it like a LinkedIn profile in the miniature. You're showcasing your talents and you're leading them elsewhere. You're leading them to your blog or your LinkedIn profile or Behance profile. You can find, look for jobs at, on Twitter. A lot of people are posting now on Twitter. Um, a lot of companies are doing this. Um, you don't want to be overly professional. This is a more casual atmosphere and it can be um, put people kind of at, uh, make people uncomfortable if you're acting like um, it's a hierarchical structure. It's not. Um, and sharing content that is valuable, again, relevant contributions make all the difference. Um, this is to get you going. These are just steps. If you don't know how to get going, these are suggestions to get you going. Um, I put a timer, you know, I put a timer on my phone when I get home from work so that I make sure that I tweet at people. Um, it doesn't always work. I still want to lay down and <laughs> um, watch television, but um, at least, you know, I'm making, making the steps. This is, um, major etiquette no-nos. Um, following a ton of people to get them follow, to follow you. This is a standard, standard procedure on Twitter and it's, it's really, it's bad behavior. Um, sending template tweets, if you're trying to get people to come to an event and you tweet individually over and over and over again the same thing to every single person that you follow, that's irritating because they want to, they go back and look at, at your Twitter feed and it's obvious it's like a robot could be doing it. And there, there are robots that do this for you. Um, if you spell a Twitter handle incorrectly, it means that person's never going to get your tweet and it's a waste of your time. Um, not including a link. Um, releasing private information owned by somebody else. Um, this is like working at a magazine and tweeting out the cover of a magazine before it hits stand, the, the newsstands. It's major, major no-no. Um, Infringing on copyrights. You've got to be careful with images, um, especially photographs and who they belong to. And then reposting without giving attribution. And then these are the only rules. To give more than you take and to always respond to whoever reaches out to you. Except for the creepy guys that <laughs> send you inappropriate tweets. Um, and this is, what I'm going, this is what I'm going to leave you with that I've, that I've found helpful. If you find it if you make it a creative outlet, for me it's words, so that's, you know, for me it's, I, I don't know if it's easier or not, but I enjoy words and I like figuring out how many words I can get into such a small space. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, you will make mistakes. Just don't be afraid to. Um, it's, it's going to happen and, and it's a learning curve. Um, and the final advice is to answer what am I thinking, not what am I doing.